And welcome back to Punchline. We continue our conversation on the issues that are shaping the 2022 Kenyatta succession race with my guest, Honorable Gladys Swanga, who is the chair of the all very powerful Finance and National Planning Committee in the National Assembly. And I believe, Honorable Wanga, you're the first woman to chair uh, such a powerful body uh, in the House and, of course, Speaker Emeritus with us, Kenneth Marende. Tonight, we want to discuss now the rising political tensions in the country and new security measures, uh, you are aware, were announced uh, this week in respect of public gatherings following the death of two people in Kenol Moranga at a meeting of the deputy president. Now, this move has largely been seen as a political and partisan move targeting the Tanga Tanga movement and the deputy president particularly because as his meetings were cancelled, those of ODM leader Raila Odinga and Gideon Moy were allowed. So, Honorable Wanga, let's start it off with you. Uh, you know where the shoe pinches, because not so long ago, ODM was on the receiving end of tear gas and whatnot and was calling out the duo that is heading the Interior Ministry. Is the government now on the right side of this matter? Uh, well, Anne, uh, yes, you're right that uh, we've been there. Um, I remember in 2014, when the security laws were were being passed, uh, there was a big uh, debate in Parliament, and it wasn't just a debate. I think uh, Parliament got into total uh, chaos because we were trying to say, uh, you know, let us not pass uh, any laws that uh, move our, our country and democratic space um, backwards. But as you know, we've, you know we, we went through the election uh, season, we've been on the streets, we've done the tear gas, we've you know, with police um, chasing up and down, left and right. Mm. Ideally, ideally, we should have an environment where everybody is free to, you know, express their, you know, political uh, viewpoint, go wherever and do their thing. But then when you have something such as what happened in, in Moranga, where people now start to kill each other, and we are not even in election season. And, and you know, when we had all these ups and downs, it was during the election you know, season, and sometimes you say temperatures rise during that time. But then it is two years to elections, and we have you know, people moving as if it is, we are in the election season already. And, and it was very sad, and, and my deepest condolences to the families of, of, um, of those who lost their, their loved ones during that, um, you know, that very, very unfortunate incident. And, I think if the National Security Council then sat and said, we are two years away from election, the reason we even had the BBI in the first place is because we do not want to go back to the kind of divisive elections that we have had in the past. And everybody has been trying to hold their end of the bargain. But the Tanga Tanga group, I must say, um, feel like they must have their way on this matter. Because if you go to church, if you're going to pray in church, why don't you just go to church, have your, you know, prayers, instead of transporting people, and I've said this before, Anne, mm. the gentleman whose picture was the face of this fracas in Moranga was transported from Nairobi to go to Moranga. The deputy president was going for a church service. Why was there transportation of people to go there and create chaos? where there was none. Well, that team is alleging that that, chaos, uh, that transportation was organized, actually, by the Kieleweke squad with a hand from Interior and what have you, but be that as it may. And I wonder if we can show a picture right now of the meeting of, um, of course, uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga yesterday in Bondo, and again, Gideon Moy also had another meeting. How then, Honorable Wanga, because at the time that, uh, you know, there was tear gas mandates and all of that going on, it was very clear that, I mean, this was to deal with ODM and the um, alleged violence that was associated with the party's meetings. Why can't Tanga Tanga claim the same thing, that this is targeted, that this is restricting uh, democratic freedoms? We are two years to election, uh, and The president has said, and, and I think we are all agreed as Kenyans, what we want for now is, is, is for us to serve our people. If you have your meeting, notify the police. Let them provide you with security. I think that is what is being asked. 
If you have your meeting, such as what um, His Excellency Raila Odinga had in Bondo yesterday, I'm sure he notified the police. They were seated in a tent. He had his guests uh, from, from central Kenya. They finished. You know, there were no goons transported to come and beat people on the street like what we saw in Moranga. So I'm sure the deputy president, like today I saw he was in church, he can go to church, he can pray, he can hold his meetings so long as he notifies the police in good time so that you know, unless we're going to have mm. a situation where, because, and you know what has been happening, and we must say it, mm. there has been, uh, you know, some sort of show off that we have crowds, you know, we have people, mm. and therefore to show that off, you carry many, many, many people to a venue, people who do not even come from there. And I think that is what has resulted in the kind of clashes we saw in Moranga, and that is what is being prevented. But if you have a meeting, notify the police, they will provide you with security to go on with your meeting, and, and, and I think that that shouldn't be a problem, so that the tensions can be lowered. So on this, the National Security Council is right. Honorable Marendi, is the hustler nation becoming a security threat? Um, yes, and unfortunately so. Uh, and in my view, what is happening to the country is actually very unfortunate, and particularly if you look at the authors of it. Because it will seem that the tensions that have built so far and the fracas that we have had have been prompted by actions of somebody uh, who is so close to the apex of power in this country, uh, namely the deputy president. And uh, the deputy president, and even the president for that matter, as at where we are, are supposed to be having clear priorities and they seem to have lost direction altogether because what they ought to be doing now is helping Kenyans to realize their aspirations and expectations of growth as a nation. But instead, what we have is a situation where the deputy president, who is the principal assistant of the president and uh, who by provisions of the constitution is supposed to deputize the president has gone off to address agenda that is very far from the national uh, focus. So what is happening indeed is very unfortunate and at any rate I must hasten to add that the actions taken by the police up to where we are are lawful. The police are merely <coughs> enforcing the provisions of the Public uh, Order Act and uh, the National Security Act and the regulations made there under. And as you remember, uh, Anne, these provisions were passed into law going back the year 2017. And among others, the people who pushed for enactment of, 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 of those regulations is the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. So he's just right. having a, a, a taste of the wine that he himself ha, ha, has helped to brew. Right. At any yeah, rate, I, I, I hear that argument a lot, and I suppose what I end up wondering is, uh, so if it's this you know, tit-for-tat kind of uh, debate, where then do you advance the rule of law? You, know? you can't just say what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and that's that, because we're trying to you know, live under a constitutional dispensation, have law and order. So it, it's, it's not enough to say really that you know, he pushed it so now he can have it, is it? It can't be so, Anne. Tick for tat from who to who? I, I mean, who from is aggrieved here? <laughs> here? I, I mean, the, the deputy president not very long ago was very dismissive and loading it, it, it over everybody else that they ought to tow the line. So why shouldn't he tow the line? The law is not discriminative. The law must apply equally on both sides. Right. And look at it. What is the agenda that they were going to address in, 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 in Moranga, for instance? They were going to say that the deputy president is the best fit for president in 2022. According and to them, it's a church a, fundraiser. And, a church fundraiser. Yes, but, but you must look at uh, what has previously happened when they have gone in the name of church uh, worship or fundraising the actions have been very far from what we know as normal church fundraising or worship. And you can't compare the actions of the two because what I saw in Bondo mm. was just a, a, a promotion of national unity. The, the Mount Kenya region once for some reason 
which I, I didn't understand clearly, want to work with the former prime minister. <laughs> they did not talk about uh, 2022 elections. Uh, those elections are still too far. Uh, and uh, as far uh, as let I me know... Ask you this, uh, Speaker Meritus, I beg your pardon for cutting you short, and I'll rope you in, uh, Honorable Wanga. You know, under normal circumstances, uh, and Speaker, you've touched on this, uh, the Deputy President, as the President's you know, principal assistant, uh, you can imagine, would be intimately involved in security matters, a recipient perhaps of intelligence briefs and so on. And here we are now, where such measures are being put in place ostensibly after his meeting where he's going to have to get an approval from an OCS to host a meeting, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. What does this mean about uh, his status in government? Are, are you saying he is now a, a DP, a Deputy President on paper and not in substance, nothing more? Honorable Wanga. Oh yeah, thank you Anne. Uh, I thought you, you were asking the speaker, but I'd like to say this. I think where, where this thing has reached, I, I have already submitted before that I think it is no longer tenable for the deputy president to claim to be the deputy president. If he was uh, being honest uh, with himself, he should resign. And for the very reasons that have been given uh, uh, back there. If you are taken to a point where you are the principal assistant to the president, mm -hmm. the president is moving north, you are moving in the exact opposite direction, you are sabotaging every move, you and your people every day are out to delegitimize de government programs, you have seen that, whatever the government does, the Tanga Tanga group led by the deputy president are there to delegitimize de de it and include up to and including missing official functions where your name is on the program to speak. Not because you're anywhere, but because you are campaigning for 2022. At this juncture, and mm -hmm. the deputy president should resign. He should resign to pursue his course for 2022 uh, politics because he no longer believes in the government of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, if I may say, mm -hmm. given what he has demonstrated. He no longer believes in, 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 in what this government believes in. He no longer is in, a, in, the, in the same space right. as the president. And this is why mm -hmm. such drastic measures are being taken. I mean, his meetings should be, his itinerary mm -hmm. should be with um, the police, I mm -hmm. mean, at any given time, as the second highest uh, government official in this country. Mm -hmm. But where we are at, and this is the point at which you say, you know, it is no longer tenable for me to serve. Let me pursue other interests. Today, you know, just today I saw the deputy president is meeting with an independent candidate to support in Msambweni by election, yet the Jubilee party has given, including himself, he was at Jubilee House on that day, saying that, um, you know, the, the Jubilee party is not going to fill the candidate. Mm -hmm. To openly defy the president in the manner the deputy president is, it truly is no longer tenable for him to be DP and... Your thoughts, uh, Honorable Marande? I largely agree with the sentiments by uh, Honorable Wanga. And to say this, that Kenyans deserve better. We are in a nation now where there are many issues that need government attention. Mm. Look at our, our, <clears throat> our debt level, for example. Mm. When I was in the government myself, leading the second arm of government, our national debt was at uh, just about Kenya shillings, two trillion. Mm. Now we are hovering around seven trillion. Mm -hmm. So Kenya is becoming poorer. Right. A number of things that should have happened have not happened. And so th these fellows are just dashing our expectations completely. And it is a road deal from a government from which we had a lot of expectations that were legitimate. Mm -mm. Hey, you know, uh, let me just ask this, uh, and uh, Honorable Wanga, I want to pose it to you because of your position in the House. You know, like he's rightly said, there are concerns about the economy. And um, if you look at the political narrative, because you are a politician, you know, it's being advanced that the deputy president and his team are sort of weaponizing the economic pain of Kenyans for political mileage. And, and my question is twofold to you. First, even as being in ODM and having teamed up with President Kenyatta uh, for this re remainder part of his term, how is it that you are unable to beat this narrative that the deputy president uh, advances, which is one that excludes him from the failures or perceived failures of President Kenyatta's administration, that if there's a problem with Wananchi, 
somehow it's not his problem, yet he has been in government holding substantive position and power. And at least you could say even for up until the last year when we could really see that in fighting in government. How is it that you're not able to say if Jubilee has been a problem and failed on the economy, then that would include the deputy president? I think, Anne, you've said it right. And this is what we must tell Kenyans and continue to tell Kenyans. Uh, because the deputy president has been out there campaigning on a narrative that him is a hustler, you know, Kenyans are suffering, and that suffering has nothing to do with him. He is the savior. But mm -hmm. that is complete nonsense. Because how are you the savior? Yet you yourself, the deputy president, Anne, has never, you know, worked like you and me somewhere, you know, where you earn, you work from 8 to 5 to earn a living. When he graduated immediately from uh, university, he went into YK-92. Uh, he has been, you know, minister in several portfolios. But in this particular Jubilee government, he himself has been the deputy president sitting in every cabinet meeting, launching a myriad of... Uh, projects which he knew did not even have budget lines. In fact, if there's anybody who put Jubilee in a fix, it is, it is uh, William Ruto. Because, because of his raw political ambition and it, because of thinking, you know, it's do or die for him to become president, you know, in 2022, he went around launching ghost projects. He went around giving false promises. He is part of this mess. If there is a mess, he is part of it. But yet he, politically, yeah. it seems you're unable to beat the hustler narrative. Why? I think, Anne, the politics has not begun. I think Deputy okay. President should not cheat himself that we have even begun playing politics. Okay. We have heeded the President's call, which is that let us first serve Kenyans. Okay. In the Finance Committee of Parliament, the President has brought in, for example, just since I became uh, Chair of Finance, to, to, to save small-scale traders, the president has brought in the credit guarantee scheme to which he allocated parliament appropriated 10 billion shillings. And we have passed a law that is going to ensure that our small-scale traders that have been affected by COVID have a credit guarantee scheme so that they can access you know, loans that they could not access in the past because the government is going to guarantee those loans with those uh, private institutions. So these are the programs that are ongoing um, mm. And, mm. you know, that the president is pushing. And this is what we are focusing on at the moment. Politics will begin. Okay. And when it does, <laughs> yeah. it has here, like, uh, here, here, too. You know, because oh, wow. people know, right. you know too well that mm. Kenyans are hustling. Yes, Kenyans are trying to meet their daily needs and so on. But they do not need people who have stolen from this country, who have ripped this economy apart to come and lie to them that we are in the same condition as, you, as yourselves. You know, that you are going to be pushed in a wheelbarrow. You know, I mean, this nonsense will stop. And it will stop as soon as it started. Okay. This is only a bubble, Anne. If we right. just throw a pin on it, it yeah. will burst. When the, politic, when the rubber meets the road, yeah. I do not think they will find anywhere to, to hold. These lies will be debunked one by one. Because you cannot be having a home of 1.2 billion which you cannot even explain how you got. And then you come and tell me in Gikomba trying to make a living that we are hustlers together. How? Uh -oh.